They say the perfect marriage is just two imperfect people who refuse to give up on each other. They say the layers of this onion is an insight to your soul. This lovely onion is going to get pickled because this is a chew story. I cry at weddings. I cry cutting onions. This onion can be pickled. Can I be pickled? Let's have a drink. Yesterday I made this blood orange syrup and today we're gonna make a cocktail with it. And usually I follow my cocktail recipes with a golden rule of cocktails, which is two parts alcohol, one part simple syrup, and one part bitter. So in this cocktail shaker, I've got some ice. We're going to add two parts gin. One, two. One part blood orange syrup. I can give you that recipe in the description. And the juice of one lime. and then shake. And then double strain into a cocktail glass. Nice color. That blood orange makes the right amount of bitterness. And look at that color. It's beautiful. Cheers. Today on The Chew Story, I'm gonna make the pickled onions that I served at my wedding. It sounds corny, but I always keep a jar of these pickled onions in the fridge to remind me of my wedding. And anytime I need to add a zing to a salad or a sandwich or a spouse, they're there. They last about a month in the fridge. That's longer than a Nicolas Cage wedding. That's and we love it. Remember, you can save the ends, throw them in the freezer in a bag, and add them to a soup next time you're making stock. First, I gotta peel this onion, or my public persona. They say that the onion itself, as you peel it, reveals the inside of your soul. I'm removing the public layer. Really, making pickled onions is pretty easy. It just takes some vinegar, water, salt, sugar, and some aromatics. I'll walk you through it. So the spices that I'm choosing in my pickled onions is a mixture of coriander, mustard seed, bay leaf, pepper, and some hot red pepper flakes, garlic. First, we gotta slice deeper into this onion. It's a cut glove. When slicing these onions, I usually use about an eighth of an inch. Too thin, they just disintegrate in the pickling liquid. Too thick, and it's just too much onion. And that's about this thickness. Really, the idea of romantic love is a construct of the 20th century. Prior to that, marriages were tied up in property rights and land grants and ways to keep the neighboring village from attacking you. Even our ability to become attached to another person is a relatively new experience. Evolutionarily, occurring somewhere between an amoeba and Rick Ashley. Towards the end, when it starts to get dangerous, I use the cut guard. Put these onions in a 16 ounce jar or some container that's gonna fit an onion. Very few species on our planet pair bond. Only three to 5% of mammals do out of the 5,000 species of mammal out there. Other animals that we share pair bonding with, the male prairie vole, black vultures, and the shingleback skank. And only one of those on that list is a mammal. Taxonomy. Again, these scraps. <laughs> I'm losing it. Again, these scraps. You don't need to put them in. You can uh, add them to your soup stock. 
The next step is to fill this container with water to measure out. So I filled this container with water and now I'm gonna pour it out to measure. We end up with about a cup of liquid. I'm gonna replace half of this liquid with white vinegar. As humans, we evolved this capacity to love as a mechanism of survival. You know, I'll watch your baby while you hunt for saber-toothed tigers. Okay, we've got our water and vinegar, so I'm gonna put that into our pan here. For every cup of liquid, I add a little less than a tablespoon of salt and a little less than a tablespoon of sugar. So we've got a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, a tablespoon of coriander, one bay leaf, a tablespoon of peppercorns, a tablespoon of mustard seed, about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and a couple cloves of garlic. Now we're gonna set this on the stove to dissolve the salt and sugar and let the flavors mingle for about a two minute simmer. As communities developed with agriculture, ancient societies needed a way to propagate their communities. And so marriage was developed as a way to grant property rights and to protect the bloodline. It's crazy to think, but early Hebrew law required a man to marry a deceased brother's widow. And once this has gone to simmer for a couple minutes, we just pour it into the container with the onions. And then I just put a lid on it and let it cool into room temperature before putting it in the fridge. Over the next few days, the flavors of the onions are going to mingle a little bit and they'll last in the fridge for about a month. I've got a little system here where I mark the days on the lid to know when a month has gone by. These are great on hamburgers, on uh, sandwiches. I put them in salads. They're, they're great on like a, a charcuterie. Time you need a little bit of a zing. They're there. They go great on hamburgers. Maybe we should make some. It's burger time. Today we're gonna make a smash burger. We're making a double stack. Here I've got two, two and a half ounce patties of ground beef. In Christianity, marriage doesn't even become a sacrament until 1563, over 70 years after Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Coincidentally, Columbus planted the first onion in Hispaniola in 1494. Everybody loves Christopher Columbus. I don't think so. I think everyone's kind of feeling weird about it. What? Really, the idea of a love match or love marriage did not become in favor globally until family's economic future was no longer tied to the land. Once people moved into the cities during the Industrial Revolution, the concept of love marriage grew. Once the cast iron skillet starts to get a little bit of that uh, whisper of, of smoke, it's time to add the hamburger meat. And I tend to salt right before I put the meat onto the skillet. If you salt earlier, it draws too much moisture out of the meat. So sprinkle this with salt. And then I've got a little garlic salt here. And then once it comes into contact with the pan, we're gonna smash it down. Think about it. Most of our great loves that have been memorialized in Western society, the love always ends tragically. Anthony and Cleopatra, love affair in early Egypt, double suicide. Once this is on the griddle, I add the more salt on the other side. King Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. I think someone lost a head in that one. 
And once you start seeing the blood rising to the other side, it's time to flip. And you want that nice sort of crust on top. Time to have the cheese. This is our processed cheese. Smells so good. It's so cheesy. And then I just cover to get that cheese to melt. Think about it. Romeo and Juliet, suicide, all of them. They're all telling us that love marriage and love matches will end in tragedy. And these stories, early love stories, really don't change until the industrial age when you start getting happily ever after. We're gonna let these burgers rest for a second and then we're gonna assemble. Two is always stronger than one. Just like my patties. Prior to that, our focus was simply on survival. Ain't got time for love. But the drive for love is biological for us all. Some buns. On to the assembly. I don't know how you assemble your burgers. Let me know. I'm a mayonnaise guy. Sometimes I put a little butter on the bun beforehand. You only live once. Winston Churchill, the man who got the United Kingdom through World War II, British army officer and historian and writer and artist, said his most brilliant achievement was the ability to persuade his wife to marry him. Then again, Winston Churchill also said, when I was younger, I made a rule never to take a strong drink before lunch. It is now my rule not to do it before breakfast. There's something to be said about that. So really, this idea of the love match and happily ever after is a construct. We know, even with the best marriages, that times can be messy. Some of our pickled onions. Romantic love between two people is tough sometimes. It takes a lot of compromise. Luckily, I don't have to compromise on my burgers. No, that's a burger. Let's have a taste. <laughs> oh my god, this thing's huge. I don't even think I can get my mouth on it. All right, so it's here. Here we go. <laughs> that is a burger. <laughs> Look at that. Mm. Oh my god, it's so pretty. The pickled onions just add a little brightness that kind of cuts through the fat of the burger and the cheese. In general, plutonic love, romantic love, love for a partner, love for family, love for a community is paramount. So at times, when love's got you down, it's time for a little burger love. Well, there you have it. Two of my great loves, pickled onions and smash burgers. Another round? Thanks for watching. See you next time.